Alright, what's going on, y'all? I just got done watching Survivor Series. Uh, obviously, there's a, there's a lot of shit to talk about. Um, the pay per view was it was okay. I mean, uh, the women's match was was pretty good. Uh, I, I expected Team Raw to win, which I predicted. Um, that match was pretty good. Uh, Bailey got the win, and afterwards Charlotte attacked her and beat her up, and that's probably gonna start the feud between the, those two. Um, the SmackDown tag team match was good. I I thought that the SmackDown tag teams were gonna win. I was surprised that they they lost, but that match was actually pretty good. Uh, pretty good finish. I liked the finish of the match. Uh, the match was was, was good. Like I said, cruiserweight match. Uh, was okay. I wasn't really didn't really care for that match as much, but uh, Brian Kendrick won by DQ because Baron Corbin came out and cost his own brand the entire cruiserweight championship in the cruiserweight division. Um, the Intercontinental Championship match was was good. I th I thought it was going to be better than it was. I actually thought that was going to be probably the match of the night. Uh, I knew Sami Zayn was going to lose. I knew the Miz. They weren't going to put the Intercontinental title on Raw. That just that, that's pointless. It makes no sense at all. Why would they do that? Um, really, really, the match was, the match was alright, it, it wasn't too bad, but it was okay, uh, the Miz won, cause he cheated, like always, cause, uh, his wife, Maurice, always helps him out, so I knew that was gonna happen, the Survivor Series tag team match, Robert Smackdown, Team Smackdown, which was Shane McMahon, Randy Orton, Bray Wyatt, the new Watton family, uh, Dean Ambrose and WWE World Champion AJ Styles versus the Raw team Seth Rollins, Roman Reigns, uh, Braun Strowman, Kevin Owens, and Chris Jericho. Um, I I I I said Team SmackDown was gonna win. Um, I didn't go down like I thought it would though. Um, I pro I knew that Braun was gonna have to get eliminated by a countout because he has he's not gonna get pinned. Uh, they're still building him up with his character. And he has, but he's still undefeated, so I knew that was gonna happen. Um, Shane took a fucking hellacious spear from Roman Reigns, dude. I, I didn't know how he was gonna do that. I don't know if he was like legitimately hurt or if he had some type of concussion, but like he got speared, and then like the referee counted one, two, and then he stopped counting. It looked like Shane had a concussion, like he hit his head pretty hard on the mat from that spear, and looked like he was out of it. So they. They called it off and they eliminated him. Uh, Owens got DQ'd because he, he used the list of Jericho. He got DQ'd from that because uh, he hit fucking I think I think it was Shane. I think he beat up Shane with it. I want to say Shane. Then uh, Jericho got eliminated, you know, and then fucking Rollins took a hellacious RKO from uh from Randy Orton. That shit was dope. He took a, a pretty good RKO. Uh, I'm surprised though that that Bray and Randy were the ones that won it for Team SmackDown. Um, I know Randy's got a history of uh, being the sole survivor on the Survivor Series tag team matches. Uh, he did it the last time that Raw SmackDown had it at Survivor Series, which was in '05 when he won it, uh, when he RKO'd Shawn Michaels and beat him. I, I, I was a little surprised how that went down. I knew they were going to win. I didn't know. I, I thought maybe. I kind of thought the Undertaker was going to come out because on SmackDown. He came out and said that he was back, you know, taking souls and digging holes, like he's like he like he says. And I thought that he was maybe come out and help them win, but that didn't happen. They won clean. Uh, ended with Bray pinning Roman after he hit him with Sister Abigail. Uh, so they they won. I wonder where that goes from here. I mean, I'm very interested to see how this, this Randy Orton and Bray Wyatt uh, tag team continues. Um, Maybe they're building up for WrestleMania between a match between them. Maybe uh, Randy turns on them eventually. Obviously, he will. We just don't know when. Um, it was pretty cool to see the Shield reunion. Uh, Dean Ambrose helped uh, Roman and Seth uh, powerbomb AJ Styles through the table because you know him and AJ got beef. Dean and Am AJ got beef, so that was pretty cool. And then Shane fucking Shane was doing crazy shit, man. He 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 was sacrificing his body like crazy, man. He did the Jumped on Braun Strowman to the announce table and then took a fucking crazy spear from Roman Reigns on the top rope. That shit was insane, man. That was insane. That that was probably the best match tonight. That was like 45 minutes. That match was really long. Which I knew the Brock and Goldberg match was going to be really short because that match was really long. But the Brock and Goldberg match, man. I can't believe that bullshit. I get... Why WWE did it, you know, Goldberg, 
he, you know, his family's never seen him wrestle. He spoke about that, you know, and, I mean, why would he come back to lose? I, I don't know, I mean, but the match was like a minute or two minutes long. Goldberg beat Brock, hit him with two spears and Jack Cameron him and then beat him. Made, this has ruined Brock Lesnar's image as the beast. Brock Lesnar, the man who's been beating people's asses for three years, came back, broke Triple H's arm twice, beat Triple H at the SummerSlam, made him tap out, broke Shawn Michaels' arm, broke Mark Henry's arm, beat down the big show, the big show. Ended the fucking streak at WrestleMania. The Undertaker's undefeated streak. The Undertaker was undefeated for 21 years at WrestleMania. And Brock Lesnar was the one that beat the streak. That same year, gave John Cena, the, the face of the WWE, the biggest ass beating he's ever received in his entire life. Fucking broke his rib. In a triple threat match against John Cena and Seth Rollins at the Royal Rumble. And fucking came back in that match and just dominated like it was nothing. Took Roman Reigns to his limit at WrestleMania. Beat Dean Ambrose at this year's WrestleMania. L literally split Randy Orton the wide the fuck open at SummerSlam this year. Literally with the fucking elbow. Split his head wide open. Blood everywhere. Beat Undertaker in the Hell in a Cell after Undertaker tried to come back and redeem himself from losing the streak and then beat him in the Hell in a Cell. And they had this man lose to Goldberg in two minutes. There there has to be some type of fucking plan behind it. I heard that Goldberg was injured. So maybe maybe he was injured and maybe they had to cut the match down short. Nobody really I don't think anybody really expected this match to be long or a great match. Because they're both fucking brawlers. They're not. Well, Lesnar is a really good wrestler because he has the background, but Goldberg's not really a wrestler. Wrestler. He's more of just an ass kiss, an ass uh, kicker. And that's what Brock is now. He doesn't really even do any wrestling moves nowadays. He just kicks people's asses. And he went out there and lost to Goldberg in two minutes. Like, what the fuck was that even about? The whole thing was just fucking pointless. There was no reason for Goldberg to even come back for that match. And if he was going to come back for a match, he could have faced somebody else if they were just going to have him do that. Why would they do that to Brock Lesnar? The guy that WWE has been building up as the, the biggest ass kicker in WWE history so far. The guy they've been building up to be this fucking unstoppable monster. And they had him lose in two minutes. There better be some type of plan behind this. Maybe they fight again at WrestleMania and Brock beats him at WrestleMania. Maybe they can build it up to that. I could see that happening. But for, to have Brock go out like that, I mean, I know Brock probably really doesn't give a fuck as long as you pay him. Which he got paid. You know he got paid, but... The way... They just booked that. I just don't... Like... I don't, I don't get it. Like, why would they book that? Like, why would they book that? I don't understand that. That makes no sense. If, if Brock and Goldberg were, were having a legitimate fight, I, I would bet my fucking life on Brock Lesnar. Goldberg, the guy who's almost 50, looks like he's fucking 50 with the gray beard and shit. Just beat Brock Lesnar in two minutes, dude. I don't understand, like... Why Why would WWE do that? There's, like I said, there's got to be some type of fucking plan behind this. There, at least there better be. Otherwise, they just they just ruined Brock's image. They just ruined Brock's image. The guy who ended the fucking streak. Beat John Cena. Ass. Split Randy Orton wide the fuck open. Just lost. He's been beating all these people's asses for like three years. He hasn't lost a match since WrestleMania 29 in 2013. And just got beat by Goldberg. In two minutes, I understand. Like I heard, like, well, why would Goldberg come back and, and lose? Like, how would why would that make sense? But how was it going to affect Goldberg if he did lose? That wouldn't affect him any, especially if this was going to be his last match. If he's never going to wrestle again, because you know Brock's going to have more matches. He's he wrestles for the WWE, even though it's part time. He's under contract with them. Goldberg is not under contract with WWE. This was just supposedly a one time thing. 
So how is it going to really affect Goldberg any if he lost? It's not. It's not going to affect him any. Especially if he's just leaving. Brock Lesnar has never beaten Goldberg, so if he had beaten Goldberg, that would have built him up even more. But they made him lose in a two minutes to Goldberg. Like, why? I, I've seen like I'm, I've seen a bunch of tweets and shit, and people are like pissed. People are like fucking like, what the fuck was that even about? Like, what? Like, I said before the pay per view went on, I hope WWE doesn't fuck this up. I hope they. Don't ruin this pay-per-view like they did SummerSlam. Like they done the plenty of pay-per-views and they did it again. Again, the fucking NXT TakeOver shows are always better than the fucking pay-per-views. If they, and I've come to notice this, if they have a fucking NXT TakeOver show the night before any big pay-per-view like SummerSlam, WrestleMania, or whatever it is, that, that show's always better than the fucking... WWE pay-per-view. So, I don't... Huh. My fucking friend just texted me, so what the fuck happened to Brock? Like, that just... That just... I don't know, man. Hopefully, something, something better go down tomorrow on Raw. Because nobody... I don't care who the fuck you say. Nobody expected that, that finish. No, no WWE fan out there expected that finish to happen. Whether you wanted Brock to win or Goldberg to win, nobody expected that finish to happen. And I can't fucking believe that finish happened, but something's got to go down. They, they're going to have to build Brock back up stronger than ever, because that just fucking ruined his image. That just ruined him as the beast. To, to lose in two minutes? The guy who's been, been tearing shit up for three years to lose in two minutes to Goldberg? No. Something's got to go down tomorrow on Raw. I don't know what it is, but overall the pay-per-view was okay. I I wish it would have been better, but you know how WWE is. You know they they get your hopes up with these big pay-per-views and these they build it up so good and they have these big matches and then just it doesn't live up to the hype. And I felt like that was that was the case was gonna be, and I was right. But hopefully if something goes down tomorrow on Raw, man. We'll have to wait and see, but that thing was bullshit, Brock. Should have never lost in two minutes, and they just ruined his image. And bottom line, that's all I gotta say about that.